hard to believe we're just a couple weeks now from the August 6th primary, and tonight we want to meet one of the candidates for mayor of Detroit. There are six front runners, including Benny Napoleon, Mike Duggan, Fred Durrell Jr., Crystal Crittenden, and Tom Barrow, who joined us last night. We're giving each candidate five minutes to tell you how they will make a difference in Detroit. And tonight, Candidate Lisa Howes, a certified public accountant and former state representative, joins us here in the studio. Lisa, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for this opportunity, Steve. Well, this is good timing for us because tomorrow night you have plans to unveil uh, your plan for what you do for the city. First of all, what do you call your plan? It's called the Detroit Kickstart Initiative, and what we're doing is we're unveiling real right now solutions that we can implement in the face of bankruptcy and under emergency management. All right, so give me, uh, give me some examples, first of all, of what you can do as a mayor of a city under bankruptcy. Well, number one, the things that we can do and we should be doing is talking about generating revenue in the city of Detroit. One precise way of doing that is by drawing down federal revenues that have been available for us in the form of grant dollars. There are eligible expenses that we are recording in the general fund that's driving that deficit that we could use to qualify for matching federal revenues. That's one area. Mm -hmm. The second area is by getting the state's agreement to support legislation that will allow the city of Detroit to better collect its local income taxes. When we have our income taxes being collected on a more timely basis, it addresses the cash flow crunch that we've been having in the city of Detroit for some time. I know you've talked in the past about, uh, and it's a familiar chorus of saying, you know, the state in revenue sharing stopped giving cities like Detroit money. And you have said in the past that you want the state to continue the revenue sharing. Uh, that doesn't appear to be something that's going to happen. Is that something you'd like to continue to push for? Well, number one, the state, the cities are the responsibility of the state. We're born out of the state. And so to allow your major city to not have the necessary resources to be able to fund police and fire, to be able to make sure our infrastructure is properly in place, to better service the citizens of the city of Detroit. You know, in this whole process, we can fix the city of Detroit's finances through bankruptcy, and that's the direction that we're moving in now. But what happens to the person at home who's facing bankruptcy, who's facing foreclosure, who's lost a job and doesn't know how that, you know, I supported getting the lights back on in the streets, but what about the person who can't afford to keep the lights and gas on in their house? That's who we should be talking about. And the only way we begin to address those issues is by creating jobs, our job opportunities. We gotta put people back to work in the city of Detroit. Now I'm sensing a change in, in what you're saying right now from what you were saying a couple of weeks ago, and I understand that because a couple of weeks ago you were fighting tooth and nail against an EM. Then you were fighting tooth and nail against a bankruptcy, but do you agree now it looks like a foregone conclusion? I believe that that was the beginning, or that was the end that was already concluded before we got started. And so this emergency management wasn't something that just two weeks ago we were fighting. Mm -hmm. This is something that came to us in the State House in 2011. So it's an issue that, that has usurped the voting rights of people. But what I want the people of Detroit and the voters of Detroit to know is that we can't lose focus and we certainly cannot lose faith in the face of a bankruptcy. We have to be vigilant and come out and vote in record numbers because we can say that our vote has been taken, but it's another thing to give it away. So again, going back, uh, uh, do, I, do I sense that you're going to stop fighting a proposed bankruptcy and, and, and just agree that it's a foregone conclusion and just it sounds like you want to move past that and say okay how do we deal with a city in bankruptcy well what I've dealt with is solutions mm -hmm. what are the solutions when you talk about bankruptcy protection it was about getting protection from our creditors what we have done now is we've included pensioners and retirees in that definition of creditors when we talk about what the long-term liabilities look like now that number is up to 18 billion mm -hmm. just in February it was 14.9 and so let's look at the three tranches of debt that we're faced with here in the city of Detroit. One is the water revenue bonds. We're receiving uh, timely receipts from those ratepayers who are residents as well as non-residents of the city of Detroit. We're not at risk, at least no one's told me, right. that we're at risk of not being able to meet those obligations. So that should not be included in our debt? That should not be included in the conversation of why we need to be in bankruptcy. Okay. Because it's being handled. The second area is retiree health care costs. Mm -hmm. I had proposed early on that we have to get a handle on that number because it will grow out of control. And the option to do that, to stop the double dipping, if you will, for eligible individuals who are employed by another employer who offer those types of benefits, mm -hmm. they can be removed from the city of Detroit system. So therefore, we don't have to have them as a part of the calculation. We have about 30 seconds here. I just want to get, let you give a pitch here for 30 seconds to Sir. the people of Detroit. Well, Detroit, again, this is about you. 
Uh, this opportunity that we have is about controlling our own destiny. We can move forward as a city, but we have to remain focused. Again, the city of Detroit cannot get better until life is better for the people who live here. All right. Lisa House, thank you very much. Candidate for mayor of Detroit. Good luck to you. And, of course, uh, the vote is going to be coming up quicker than any of us. In two imagine. more weeks.